Welcome to The Healthy Me, episode number one. I'm Trina Felber, registered nurse and CEO of Primal Life Organics. I believe there is a healthy person living in everyone. It is proven that on a day-to-day -day basis, we function from our most comfortable personality. We are robotic in our thinking, doing, and ultimately creating of our future self. I believe we have multiple personalities and the healthy me is one of them. Unfortunately, we are in the habit of being ourselves and while change may happen for a short time, we ultimately fall back into our comfort zone and into the habit of being ourself. Stop for one second and reflect about this. Most likely when you created a lasting change in your life, it occurred after you stepped out of your comfort zone. The Healthy Me is designed to help you call up your healthy self, step out of your comfort zone, shake things up, and get results. Find and empower your healthy me. Today, I am empowering you with a four simple steps to creating a healthier you. We typically take the path of least resistance, meaning the easy way out. And because of that, we actually develop a personality that I call the easy me. It's the easy me. It's the easy me. And when the easy me is in charge, we resist. Have you ever made a spur of the moment decision that wasn't good? You unconsciously made that decision because your easy me took the easy way out. When you have a big decision to make, you have to be conscious to make the right choice, right? That's why big decisions are uncomfortable because you have to be conscious and the easy me is not in charge when you become conscious. Stick with me. I will explain how this relates to creating the person you want to be. Let's talk for a moment about the path of least resistance. Admit it. Often you're able to take the easy road because it's easy. It's human nature. We F ourselves all the time. We totally do. We are, by human nature, always going to take the path of least resistance unless we consciously choose a different path. Not too many people say, yes, I want to go to college and spend a lot of money, sit in a classroom all day, take tests and do research papers. You have to consciously make yourself do that. It's a good decision, but you have to make yourself do it, right? Left to your own devices, would you get up and go to work if they would just continue to deposit the check anyway? No, you consciously have to get yourself out of bed to go to work because you know that the check won't be there unless you get out of bed, right? The path of least resistance, your easy me personality, same thing. It's the personality that you function from on a daily basis, the personality you make your decisions from. Does that make sense? No? If it doesn't make sense, stick with me. I'm going to explain it to you. I'm going to prove to you that you are who you are today and who you are today is a function from yesterday. The day before, the day before that, the day before that, the day before that, and the day before that, and that got and that and that all the way back there because you have been unconscious. It's your easy me personality. And it might've changed a bit over time. You grew up a little, but the personality that you created is the person that you are today. It's who makes your daily decisions. You know, latte or no latte. <laughs> if you want to make a change, you can't really change the easy me. You created him, he's in there, and he is really strong and resistant to change. He is not comfortable being someone completely different. So New Year's Day shows up, you made a few resolutions, and now is the moment of truth. Day one of the easy me trying to be the new you. <laughs> and you don't wanna do it. You don't wanna do what you were all gung-ho to do last night, and I'll tell you why. Because when the person inside your head, the easy me who's running the show, 
got a handle on the new resolution, the new you, he feels uncomfortable and says, holy crap, today's the day. No, I don't want to do that. It's not me. And you're right. He's right. It's not you. And it's not the you that you function from. I'm going to prove to you that you have multiple personalities. I struggled with being healthy for a long time. In fact, it wasn't until approximately 10 years ago that I finally realized why I couldn't keep my New Year's resolutions, give up healthy habits, and really live healthy. I mean, have you ever made a New Year's resolution to keep it up for three, four, five days, and then ultimately you go back to your old habits? I couldn't figure out why that was happening. But I'm telling you, it dawned on me one day. And it's not that I didn't want to be healthy, because I really did. It's not that I didn't want to go to the gym, because I really wanted to go. I could see and picture myself being this beautiful, fit, healthy person, eating the right healthy foods, going to the gym every day, doing yoga, meditation, doing all of these things, yet that person could never be me. I was never comfortable with that person. It's a person I just envisioned. Then one day I realized the reason that I could not be healthy and keep those healthy habits was because that wasn't my comfort zone. That wasn't the personality I was working with. My framework and every decision I made was coming from the easy me personality. The easy me wasn't so healthy. If I wanted to be healthy, I would have to create a new healthy personality. The person who is comfortable creating healthy habits. The healthy me. I know there's a lot of you out there who envision that person you want to be. But there's a disconnect, a step in between that's missing from who you are and who you want to be. How to get there. There's a total disconnect between that person that you envision and the person you are today. And that's where the healthy me comes in. I'm gonna share with you how I got to the point where I am today. I changed my personality. I actually created a new personality to function from the healthy me. And here's how I did it. How I made that person way out there that I saw in the distance that I really, really, really wanted to be and how I became that person. It's actually really simple. I created a simple process to bring life to the person that you want to be and create your healthy me. How to create your healthy me. There's a couple steps that you have to do, but the first thing you have to do is realize that you have multiple personalities. I do, you do, everyone does, and it's okay. My favorite story that I love to tell people is about Mrs. Smith. She lives inside me. She's an alter ego that I created. Yes, I have an alter ego that I call Mrs. Smith. I created her for a purpose. I was working with a life coach and I told her, I just can't get anything done. I can't. I'm getting interrupted. My kids, my family, my dogs, my house, everything is going on in my life and I can't get anything done. When it comes down to the wire, I just get frantic. She said, during those times, you need to be a different person. When you need to call this person up, you simply pull the trigger and call that person up. But you need to find a person you want to be. So I envisioned and built a personality that can kick butt and get things done. Before I tell you about my kick butt personality, I want to explain to you the reason why New Year's resolutions don't work, okay? So stick with me. What happens is this. You developed into a personality that I call the easy me. You have labeled yourself as certain things in your brain. You talk to yourself a certain way. Your brain is already pre-wired to make decisions without you consciously knowing it. You are unconsciously being exactly who you created. Okay, it has nothing to do with, it's just me. I just don't like to run. That's just who I am. I don't eat vegetables. I always have my latte with sugar. 
You consciously have nothing to do with those decisions. It's not your fault today because that's who you created in your brain years ago. So today, it's uncomfortable to try and do things that you're not used to. You are a habit. It's like walking into the grocery store. I could probably blindfold every person out there, send them into the grocery store, and you would probably come out with 99% of the correct items in your cart because you are in the habit of knowing exactly where everything you buy is located, what it feels like, what it smells like, and you purchase almost the same thing every single time you go in. You are a creature of habit, the easy me. You have to consciously be aware of habitual behavior. But in order to change, and in order for change to happen, you have to create the personality who has that behavior, the healthy me. We all have multiple personalities. Okay, let me prove it to you. I have two ways that I can prove to you that you have multiple personalities. The easy me person is who you function from every single day. It's the person that you are because it's who you're comfortable with. He or she is your most prominent and unconscious personality. He's you. You also have other personalities. If something stressful happens that stresses you out, you turn into stress me personality. Stress me personality deals with stress or change by binge eating, going to Starbucks to grab a latte, lying on the couch, crying, watching TV. You know what you do when stress happens. There's a trigger and it's a stress and then you turn into this other personality, stress me personality. And stress me functions because he is comfortable in those types of situations. Notice I did not say he is healthy. We can work on creating a new, better equipped stress me later. Let's get the healthy me in charge. <laughs> and trust me, stress me shows up way less when healthy me is in charge. Okay, I'm gonna prove it to you again. So you go to the bar with your friends and someone has too much to drink. It might not be you, maybe it's a friend. But we have all witnessed the transition, you know, the person who turns into someone else. We hear it all the time. Man, when you drink, you are someone else. Well, of course they are. It's a personality living inside their brain and it lets loose under the influence of alcohol. Some people say that it's your true identity. I don't know. I don't really care. Some people become really quiet. Some people who are naturally shy become loud, obnoxious, flirtatious. It's because they're functioning from a personality inside their brain. The trigger is alcohol, and it calls up a different personality, the one who functions best under the influence. It's who you become and who you are. Not good or bad, and I'm not judging. I just want you to understand that you have multiple personalities. And here's the strength in that knowledge. Today, as you sit here right now, you can develop a personality that you want to function from every single day. If you have struggled with weight, if you have struggled with health, fitness, if you have struggled with alcohol, addictions, cigarettes, if you have struggled with becoming angry or frustrated with your children, yelling and losing your patience, if you have struggled with these things, it's because you are functioning inside of a personality that doesn't know any other way to deal with these situations. You are functioning from habit. What I'm here to tell you is that you can create a healthier personality. And it's not hard, but it does take work. Here are the four steps in creating your healthy me. Step one. The first step to creating your healthy me is that you have to stop, sit down, and consciously write out exactly who it is you want to be. 
you have to write out exactly who you want to be to the T. You have to define yourself, redefine yourself, your characteristics, your actions, your beliefs. Okay, you don't have to change your hair color and you're not going to lose 10 pounds yet, but you have to define the personality traits that you want. The first step is putting down on paper who you want to be. When my kids upset me, I'm gonna take a deep breath and I'm gonna give them a hug. Be conscious of who you are now and who you want to recreate. I want to be conscious of who I am in every decision I make. I want to stop being habitual. I want to stop and think about life. I want to be present in the moment. I want to eat healthy. I want to skip the ice cream after dessert. I'm going to tell you how you get, how you get there. But the initial step is defining those characteristics. And it doesn't have to be all inclusive here today, right now. Because as you go through the next couple of days, weeks, months, thinking and defining who you want to be, please notice when you're doing something that you wouldn't define as healthy or define as who you want to be in your healthy me personality. And I want you to write that down. So. At 10 o'clock at night, when you reach for the bag of chips, I want you to write that down, okay? I'm not saying forever, you're never, ever, ever gonna be able to have chips at 10 o'clock at night. I'm saying to train yourself into being conscious of what you are doing and who you ultimately want to be. You're gonna have to get over some hurdles, but I'm going to teach you how to get over those hurdles. For me, it worked like a gem. So I can't guarantee that it's gonna work for you. You're gonna have to do the work. It's only going to work as good as you put the effort into it. But I promise you, it's a pretty simple way of creating a healthier personality for yourself, okay? Are you with me? Let's get back to my story about the personality I created when I wanted to kick some butt and get some work done, okay? So, Mrs. Smith. I needed to get work done. A no excuses, kick butt personality. So in my mind, I envisioned Angelina Jolie as Mrs. Smith. Do you remember the movie, Mr. and Mrs. Smith? (laughs) Of course I really liked Mr. Smith too, but I wanted to be Mrs. Smith. She kicked butt. She got it done. And she is the bomb. She didn't take no for an answer. She didn't care who got in her way. She didn't. And in fact, it was her husband she was beating up on. So I'm not saying I want to beat up on my husband, but I needed to set the boundary that when I become this person, the work needs to get done and everything else at that moment needs to stop. Mrs. Smith doesn't come out every day. I don't pull Mrs. Smith up to the forefront every single day. But when I have the deadline that's due, and when I'm stressed out or when I need to get something done, Mrs. Smith is called up and I get it done. And almost no situation puts a halt to it. Got it? Mrs. Smith is not who I am every day. It's not who I function from. I'm very comfortable with her and I really love her and I wish sometimes I could function from her every day, but it's just not realistic. The person that I created to function from every day is the healthy me. You can call him or her the healthy you. You can call him or her by name. If you've got a better thing to call it, go for it. But it's the person that you're creating, the person that you're putting out there, out in front of you. So your first step is to define who that person is. And it's a process. Every single time you think of something or you do something you like or dislike, Write it down. Become conscious of your personality, of who you are right now, today. At this point, you are creating a new personality and you can put some of your old personality in it, but you wanna make sure you're putting in the things that you like and the things that you want. So step two, once you've defined your healthy me and who this person is gonna be, 
and you've sort of named them, you're comfortable with them, you need to create him outside of your mind. He has to live outside of your body before he can live in your brain. Here's why. Your already dominant personality is in charge of your head, like it or not. He will not let this guy in. You have to be sneaky and trick your brain into liking him. <laughs> so you need to put that person that you create, the healthy me, out in front of you. Think of him like a shield. This person is going to walk about two feet in front of you, an arm's length away at all times. And you are going to filter every decision that you make through him. You can touch him. So he's about an arm's length away and he's right here. He's all around you. You are in the bubble of your new personality and every situation that you're in needs to filter through that personality, the healthy me. And it's gonna take at least a week or so for you to even remember that he's there. So you're gonna walk into Starbucks, you're gonna sit down at a restaurant to order, you're gonna be out getting your cup of java, or dinner and you're gonna go, crap, I forgot to filter this one. So you have two choices. This is where you stop and think, what would the healthy me do? Would the healthy me say, okay, next time, next time I'll remember to filter it because now I'm more aware. What would the healthy me do? Would he say, you know what, I'm gonna throw this one away or give this one to someone else and I'm gonna reorder what I really should have ordered the first time, okay? Are you getting the picture? When you sit down and eat at a restaurant and you're looking at the menu, the first thing that should come to mind is my bubble is right here. I'm in the bubble, the healthy me. He's all around me. I'm gonna filter this decision through the healthy me. What would the healthy me order? What looks good to the healthy me? Skip the fried food? Let me go for the baked chicken and the broccoli or the salads, okay? You don't have to skip the alcohol, but I would filter that through too. What would the healthy me do? It's a Wednesday night. I have to work tomorrow. I'd like to get up and do my workout. So what would the healthy me do? Who is the healthy me going to be tomorrow morning if I drink a beer tonight on a Wednesday. Every decision gets filtered through the healthy me. As you live more consciously over the next few months, that healthy me becomes closer and closer and closer and closer to you so that eventually the healthy me is right here. You're pretty much rubbing against the healthy me all the time. You almost wear him. You almost don't even need to ask what the healthy me would do. You unconsciously are beginning to function from the healthy me. When do you know that you have become that person and that that person has actually stepped inside your brain and taken over? So you know it when you no longer have to say, what would the healthy me think? What would the healthy me do? Because the decisions are coming out. So when your daughter walks up and is crying and screaming, you're not throwing your arms up. You take a deep breath and you say, what can I do to help you? I'm here for you. You know it when you don't have to stop and reorder. You know it when it becomes automatic. You know the healthy me is functioning when it's comfortable. Did you hear me? When it's comfortable. It's uncomfortable out here. Now out there, it's uncomfortable. It's not you. When stress happens, you become someone else. As soon as you recognize it, and it won't be the first minute, and it might not be the second minute. It might not be for two days into a stressful event that you all of a sudden think, wait a minute, this isn't comfortable. What would the healthy me do? The healthy me would sit down and meditate. The healthy me would go to bed and take a nap because sleep sometimes helps and creates solutions. The healthy me would take care of myself. The healthy me would go for a run because that's when I figure things out. I don't sit in front of the TV and figure things out. When stressful situations happen, 
we're not ourselves. That's why it's not comfortable. But you can pull yourself back into being that healthy person so much faster when you tune in and realize, I'm not comfortable with this personality. Have you ever said, I'm sorry, I'm just not myself today. I'm not myself right now. And you're not. You are a personality that you have developed to deal with that type of situation. And it's uncomfortable. At night, before you go to bed, what I want you to say to yourself is a couple of things, okay? The thoughts that go through your head at night are setting you up for either success or failure in the morning, okay? When you go to bed at night, you close your eyes, say your prayers, and then envision what you're gonna wake up like in the morning. Envision your sleep. I'm going to get deep sleep, R-E-M sleep. You have to tell your brain this, did you know that? Your brain doesn't know to go to sleep. Your brain is used to just doing what it normally does. And I can tell you that I've tested this. I've tested this with a sleep app. The nights that I tell my brain to go into a deep sleep, boom, it was straight across deep sleep all night. The nights that I didn't, I was all over the place because my brain didn't know. So now every night before I go to bed, I tell myself, you brain are going to sleep really deep and boom, I'm out. You also want to envision what you're going to wake up like. Are you gonna wake up and hit the snooze six times? Because that's what you're used to doing, right? That's comfortable. If you tell yourself, okay, no snooze, when that goes off, I'm gonna open my eyes and let the daylight in. And as soon as you open your eyes and you let the light in, it triggers something in your brain. It says time to get up and your neurons start firing. If you're gonna get up and work out and you struggle with that, I usually tell myself this little trick. When my early alarm goes off, I say to myself, I'm going to be just as tired in one hour as I am right now, so I might as well get up and work out because that's what's going to make me feel better. That's what the healthy me would do. You set yourself up for success in the morning by creating that at night. Step three, feeling the power. So the healthy me sometimes needs to power up or recharge. So this is a little exercise that I created just recently to help me recharge. I was on a long flight home and I had a lot of things going through my head. I closed my eyes and I realized that my mouth was so heavy and my body just felt really, really, really heavy and tired. So I want you to do this. Close your eyes for one minute right now, unless you're driving. <laughs> just, just a couple seconds, close your eyes Keep your mouth however you would normally keep your mouth, just a normal stance. Feel your mood. What are your thoughts? Notice, are your hands face down or are they face up? First thing, I want you to put a smile on your face. It doesn't have to be a big smile, just a natural smile. It just means that you are consciously moving the muscles of your face to form a smile. What happened to your mood? Did you notice anything? Let's do it again. Let your mouth go flat, keep your eyes closed. Can you feel the heaviness? Now, just a tilt of your, your lips, just a little smile. Did you feel the weight lift off your shoulders? The next thing I want you to do is this. Close your eyes and put your hands in your lap. Put them on your knees or on your lap, but put the palms facing down. This is an uplifting experience. You can sit at your desk, close your eyes for 30 seconds. This will help you improve your emotional state, your healthfulness, and your mindset. So close your eyes, hands face down, smile. Okay, now change the direction of your hands to face up. Did you notice anything? Those two moves done either independently or together change your mindset, change your energy field, change your energy level and your mindset. Make you conscious of yourself. That's it. That's all you have to do. It lifts a weight off of your shoulders. That is how you create 
empower, and invite your healthy me into your brain. I gave you four steps to creating the healthy me. The first step is to create and develop your healthy me personality. Step two is to put that person two feet in front of you, an arm's length away, and that person forms that bubble around you. For the next three, four months or longer, as long as it takes, it doesn't matter, you function through that person. Every day, that bubble, that person, should be closer and closer and closer on you until it's saran wrap wrapping you. Until the day you realize that you no longer have to think about asking yourself what the healthy me would do. Every question on day one, two, and three, when your mind remembers what that healthy me is there, every question needs to ask, what would the healthy me do? Retrain your brain. What would the healthy me do? Consciously ask, what would the healthy me do? Be conscious of your choices, of your decisions, of your life. What would they eat, what they think, what would he or she do? How would the healthy me react? Would the healthy me answer the phone right now or would the healthy me take care of myself? What would the healthy me do? As the bubble gets closer and closer, you will become that personality. It will take over. You will have altered your brain. You may have moments of weakness, but you will never have to put that person two feet out again if you call them back up very quickly. Step three, going to bed at night, focus on who you want to be when you wake up, how you're gonna wake up, and tell your brain to go to sleep. Tell your brain, sleep deep in REM all night. Trust me, it works. And step four, take a breather. Close your eyes and uplift your mouth. If you do this often enough, you will notice that as you live your day, you will automatically hold your mouth in a smile and your energy will be so much higher. I am so happy that I can be here with you guys. I'm so happy that I can share my insights. It has been 10 years in the making for me to actually realize that I created this healthy personality a new personality to create the healthy me. I now function from the healthy me 95% of the time. Do I have breakdowns? Do I have moments where I'm stressed out? Do I have moments where I revert? Yes, of course, everyone does. But the healthy me is my go-to personality. It's my comfortable personality. I'm very, very, very proud to say that this is a philosophy that I have created because I lived through it. Because I knew that I wasn't getting anywhere being the person that I was because I wasn't comfortable with change. The person that I was was not comfortable with some of the behaviors that I wanted to instill in my life even though I knew they were healthy. It's simple. It's a simple, simple solution to just changing your life. You can't change it overnight. You can't change it overnight because your personality that you're functioning from today resists it. It will resist it to the point where you give up because you can't do it with who you are today. You can't do it in this personality. Very few people can change without realizing that they have to give some things up. In order to give some things up, you can't look at it like you're giving things up. You have to look at it like I'm developing a better life. I am developing a better person. I am developing a healthy me, which is completely different than trying to change the messed up guy that lives in here right now. Because we're all left up <laughs> in here sometimes. This guy, wants us to stay here, wants us to stay right here. No, you don't want to get out of bed at 5 a.m. to go for a run. Hell no, he doesn't want to. This guy, he wants to sleep till noon, okay? That guy, the healthy me, that guy does. That's the guy you want to be. That guy who stands right here and shields you two feet that guy wants to get up and be healthy. That is the guy I want talking to me 
in here. Thanks, guys. That, my friends, is what the healthy me is about. This is what my life is about. That's why I created the businesses that I've created. It's why I've created the lifestyle that I have, and it's why I have created more than one personality. So I'll see you soon. This is Mrs. Smith signing off.